all right, here's a problem uh, that's asking us to find linear velocity. And so some of these problems that, you know, these quote unquote application or word problems, um, you got to understand what you're solving for, right? We have, we have quite a few formulas if you think about it. They're not complex formulas, right? But we have quite a few. We have a formula for finding the radian measure of an angle if you know the arc length and the radius. We know how to find the arc length of a piece of a circle if you know the radian measurement and the radius of the circle. We have the linear velocity, which is the arc length divided by time, and arc length is theta times r over t. This is linear speed. So we're going to be using a formula like this. But we also had a formula that we just derived on the previous video that says you can take the uh, angular speed of the object and multiply it times the radius to find the linear velocity. And then we have the rotational speed, which is theta divided by t. So look at all of these formulas, right? You know, memorizing these formulas is, is always an option. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this problem. It's going to take us a little bit of time, but we're going to look at this problem two different ways. Okay. One way is suppose we didn't know any of these, all right, to find the linear velocity. We start with the fact that this speed or this object is moving at 2 pi over 11 radians per one hour of time. And they want us to be able to convert this into the linear velocity of the object. Now we have a way of converting radian measurements into lengths, right? So what we can do is we can say, okay, and if, it might make a little bit more sense here if I use a circle. So here's a cross section of the earth, okay, if you will, right? The equator is the, is the, the ring around the, the, the diameter, if you will, of the cross section of planet earth. So if the equator lies on a radius of 3,000 miles, there's an object traveling like so, right? The Earth is spinning, right, at this speed. So as this object spins, it covers, as this object spins, it covers a linear distance. Well, if it spins, let's just, for the sake of simplicity, go here. If this object spins from here all the way around to here, right, it's passed through two pi radians. Right? So I can convert this radians into an arc length. What's the arc length if that object goes here all the way around? What do we call that? Right? We call that the circumference. So we could say that this is 2 pi times 3,000, because that's how we calculate the circumference of a circle. And what happens? Because of this conversion factor, right? the circumference of the circle, the full circumference of the circle divided by is equivalent to 2 pi radians, these radians can cancel, and then we're left with this. Now, if you're looking at this, you're like, this is kind of strange. It is kind of strange, I agree, because this 2 pi and this 2 pi, we already know we can cancel them because they're in a fraction above one another, right? So even these are going to cancel, and we're left with 2 pi over 11 times 3,000. So we'll write that as 6,000 pi over 11, and on the top we have miles. And on the bottom of this, we have one hour. So there's our speed in miles per hour, okay? And we can, we can take this fraction and just call that 6,000 pi miles per hour. I'm sorry, 6,000 pi over 11 miles per hour. Okay, so here is our linear velocity. Now, this formula, and I said from the beginning, we're going to look at this as if we didn't have any of these formulas. What is this formula? This formula says to find the linear speed of an object, take its rotational velocity, which is this, its angular speed. That's omega, right? That's this funky looking W. That's omega times the radius, which is 3000, which is essentially what, exactly what we just did. And we got this answer. Okay, so this is using conversion and unit conversion, metric conversion to get to the final answer. But the formula can do that for us as well. Okay, so if you're somebody who likes formulas, likes memorizing formulas, go for it. As long as you understand what all of these measurements are, right, and all these variables are. Okay, but these types of problems can be done just using metric conversions and unit conversions, understanding that, you know, two pi radians is equivalent to a, a full circumference of the circle and so on and so forth, all right?